All right, now we're ready to continue our conversation about the structure and function of body systems. Today, we're going to be looking at the skeleton. And these words, structure and function, are really important when we're talking about all of these systems, but definitely when we're talking about the skeleton, because we're talking about the structure. You should be able to draw something of what a skeleton looks like, hopefully much better than this. If you like eating ribs, then you know that there are ribs here. And when I think about the structure of these ribs, I can start to think about their function, because part of this is to protect the internal organs. So we're going to be talking about the structure and function of skeletons. Very cute. Now we go on to the first thing. You all know what bones are. There's the typical story of the dog going into your backyard and digging up a bone and finding a bone and you're freaked out because you think that there's a dead body in the back when actually it was probably just some bird bones or chicken bones for when you threw the chicken outside. Anyways, here are some bones. Now, when you look at bones, you tend to think they're not that exciting. They're just this hard material like rock or something, like dead material that's inside supporting all the living cells and tissue that's around. But this is not correct. Bone is actually living tissue that has its own blood supply. Blood supply means that our blood has to deliver nutrients and oxygen to it. Nutrients like glucose and oxygen to keep the bone tissue alive. It grows and it changes. You know that it grows because as you are growing right now, a lot of you are getting taller. Your bone structure will have to change in order to maintain your growing body frame. It can actually repair itself when it's damaged as well too. So you might be thinking, why do some of my classmates have casts on their arms or their legs? Well, that process actually helps the bone to heal faster because you still need to move. If you just laid in bed the entire time for six months, then you'd be fine and it'd probably heal itself. But because you have to still carry out your life, we use technologies such as casting in order to help increase how quickly someone can actually heal from broken bones. Calcium and other minerals will make the bone strong. So when you talk about needing to eat food that have good sources of calcium, like milk and fish, and then minerals to have a healthy balance, like drinking vitamin water is definitely not enough. I've learned that. But you have to have a healthy diet so you can get all these things into your body so you can continue to keep your bones strong. But they are still flexible a little bit to absorb some of the shock that you put your body through. So as I said, uh, a balanced diet to keep your bones healthy. And you also need exercise to regularly apply forces to your bones and to your muscles so that you can help to keep them active and moving around. So here's a better looking skeleton than the one that I drew at the very beginning. You can probably already name a few of these things. For example, ribs. You should probably refer to your own ribs as your rib cage. You've got your skull here. There's other names for these bones. And we're going to learn the advanced names of some of these bones, but the common names of some of the other ones. Otherwise, it sounds like you're learning a fourth language beyond French, Japanese, or Spanish. So we're going to stick to some common names. And then we're also going to use some fancy names that you are more likely to come across uh, in your future when talking about these things. So all bones in the body make up a skeleton, they're joined together to create a framework that will support your body. The average adult human has 206 bones. See if you can find out if babies have more or less bones than 206 and try to find out why that's a nice little bonus thing to figure out. Here's a baby. How many bones does this guy have? Oh, I don't know what that is. That's either eyeballs really low or nostrils. Here we go. And let's name some of these bones. Skull, you probably already knew. Your collarbone, this is something that Mr. Lee broke when he was younger in high school, fell off his bike, landed on his shoulder, and started crying. And now his collarbone has healed, but it's a little bit crooked and sticks out a little bit. Uh, really gross. Next, jawbone. You use this to talk, to eat, to help you chew. Sternum is this bone right here, right down the middle. It's actually what people are pressing down on when they're doing CPR to try and uh, bring somebody, not back to life, they're not dead already, but we're trying to help them kind of uh, improve their heart rate and be able to make sure that there's blood pumping around the body. The sternum, very strong bone right here in the center uh, that the rib cage is actually attached to. 
This is an advanced name for this thing right here. This arm bone, we actually call the humerus. You might have heard about people talking about bumping their elbow, and they call that the funny bone. That is not actually a bone. It's actually a nerve. It's related to the nervous system, and it gives you a tingling feeling, and they call it the funny bone. Maybe it's related to this uh, fancy name here, humerus. But the humerus is referring to this arm bone over here. Okay. What else do we have here? Vertebral column, I'm sorry, it's covered by my text a little bit here. Vertebral column, you're talking about your spine. These are individually called vertebrae and they fit together like locking Lego pieces, but it allows your back to arch back and forth. So I'm arching back and forth now. It's good to stretch out, feels really good. So these are supporting our spine and protecting our spine. This right here, kind of the little cradle bit that keeps our legs attached to our body. This is called the pelvis. Then we have some more fancy names. Um, I'll reveal both of these. The radius and the ulna. There are two bones in your forearm here, and that allows you to twist your hand around so you can wave kind of uh, by rotating your wrist. And the only reason you can rotate your wrist is because we have two bones in here. The easy way to remember this is that when you put your thumb up, your thumb is uh, closer to your radius bone and your pinky is closer to your ulna bone. So try to take a look at your hand right now and then try to be able to figure out okay, which side your thumb is on. Hopefully you can figure that out. If you don't know what your thumb is, and which one's your pinky, you're in trouble a little bit. The thumb will be closer to the radius bone, and the pinky will be closer to the ulna. So we'll make sure to identify that. The biggest bone in your body, another fancy name, is called the femur. This is your thigh bone. This would be great for doing things like playing baseball if you were swinging it around. But it also makes for very powerful kicks in karate and taekwondo and kickboxing and kicking footballs. What else do we have here? Kneecap, pretty straightforward. And then we have uh, two bones here. I'll just reveal these, uh, these two. You also have two bones down here in your shin area. This is the shin one when people are kicking your tibia and you, there's not a lot of skin on this front part here. That is called the tibia and the one behind is called the fibula. And that actually helps you, allows you to rotate your ankles as well too. And then of course we have the ankle bone. There are fancy names for all of these and for the fingers as well too, but we're not going to bother with all of those right now. I think this is plenty to keep you busy with naming some types of bones. Four main functions of skeletons. Um, you can actually use this diagram, see if you can pause the video and try to guess, remember which are the names of each of these bones. Four main functions of skeletons, uh, they help too. You probably know this already, holds the internal organs in place, otherwise the body would be floppy. Imagine if you had no skeleton, you just had all these soft, gooey organs just swishing around each other, like the slime you're carrying around every day, which is making me crazy a little bit, actually. Okay, creates a framework for your organs and muscles to connect to. So you have your muscles that are connected on the outside of your bones, and then you have organs inside here, inside here, that are doing your bodily functions as well too. So um, just a little side note, a bug like a cricket. A cricket has muscles actually on the inside of their bone. They have the something called an exoskeleton. Exo may mean something else to you, but exoskeleton is a skeleton that's on the outside. We have an internal skeleton. So bugs and insects and crickets have an exoskeleton that's on the outside, but they still have muscles. It's just that the muscles are attached on the inside. How cool is that? And obviously the vertebral column that we call the spine here is going to hold the body upright. So make sure to pause the video, uh, write these things down. As you're writing them, make sure you're understanding them. See how I'm underlining things for myself? You should probably do this as well too or highlight some of your words or terms. And Finally, we have a few more functions of bones. This is going to get a little bit more detailed, but you can probably guess a lot of these things. So protecting the vital organs. Vital organs means really important to you. Obviously, your heart is very important to pump blood around. Your lungs are really important to help you bring oxygen into your body. Bones are hard and are strong and they protect against damage. If you get hit in the chest with a soccer ball really fast, it might knock you out for a little bit, but 
it shouldn't damage your rib cage and your internal organs will still be intact so protecting things like the skull with the brain the rib cage with the heart and lungs and the backbone with the spinal cord helps the body to move muscles we will be talking about in the next video so muscles are attached to bones very important if the muscle pulls on the bone it causes the bone to actually move that's why you can move that's why i'm moving my hands in the air right now you can't tell but my muscles are contracting and it's causing my bones to move around so the skeletons will move at joints so joints like at the knee like at the elbow like at the shoulder my shoulder can only bend kind of one direction um I think we'll see this later when we get to the muscles part but my shoulder here sorry my elbow can only bend in one direction but my shoulder can actually move all around all around and you can do these really fancy dance moves because your shoulders can help you move like that and this is something that you probably didn't think about so let's extra highlight this one if I can bones actually help to make blood cells when you actually break open the bone and take a look inside it's actually hollow inside here and the hollowness inside means that they are not solid all the way through so some of the long bones in the arms and the legs like your femur like this longest bone this femur in your thigh actually has something inside called bone marrow and that bone marrow is a soft tissue and it helps to create red and white blood cells red blood cells you already know they carry oxygen red blood cells are used to carry blood around the body and they actually actually that should say oxygen to carry oxygen around the body the blood moves everywhere but red blood cells are carrying the oxygen and white blood cells which you probably haven't heard about white blood cells are the ones that help you to fight disease they help to protect you against infection so your bones are definitely living exciting tissue this guy is smiling but you can't tell because you can't see his eyebrows that would be on the outside and you can't see the eyes and then all you can see is these big scary teeth but let's if we put some lips down here maybe that's a little bit better see there you go he's happy living tissue this is you inside so remember it and always remember to thank your skeleton for giving you shape and for protecting your internal organs